In this lecture, we're going to look at more self-referential data definitions, and we're going to show how the template helps us write functions that process them. Let's get started. We're going to start by considering the Matryoshka doll, a popular toy that has a sequence of nesting dolls inside of it. We're going to write a data definition that represents this kind of doll, and then we're going to write functions that process that data. Here's the data definition that represents a Matryoshka doll. There's two possibilities, either a small doll or a larger doll. A small doll has a string in representing its color, and a larger doll contains another doll inside of it, just as we saw in the picture. Here are our structure definitions. Structures define small doll and larger doll, and they tell us that we have the fields color and smaller respectively. Now let's write some examples. Here are four examples of dolls. The first one is just a small doll that's red. D2 and D3 are both larger dolls, each with a single small doll inside of them. And then D4 is yet another larger doll with a small doll inside of it. Let's write a fifth example that shows how we can combine larger dolls to get even bigger dolls. D5 is a larger doll with a larger doll inside of it, with another larger doll inside of that, with a small doll that's blue inside that one. So we've got three larger dolls with a small doll inside. The first function we're going to write that processes a doll determines whether the innermost doll, the small doll, is red. Let's get started. Here's our signature purpose and header. Our function takes in a doll as input and produces a boolean. We're going to call the input d. Now let's write some examples using our definitions that we've seen already. Here's five examples showing that d1, which is just a solid red doll, is true. d4, which is a larger doll around that doll, is also true. And the others are false, no matter how many larger dolls we wrap. Now let's get started writing our template. When we look at our data definition, we see that it's a one of with two possibilities. So we know that we're going to need a conditional with two clauses. Our two possibilities are a small doll or a larger doll. So we're going to distinguish them with the small doll question mark and larger doll question mark predicate functions that we get automatically from our structure definitions. Each of our structures has one field, so we're going to use an accessor in each case in the appropriate clause to access the color of a small doll and the smaller field of a larger doll. So far, our template looks very similar to our data definition. We have one field in each case, and a small doll is the first possibility, a larger doll is the second possibility. But there's one important difference that we need to address. Doll is a self-referential data definition, that is, the definition of doll refers to doll in its, inside itself. That means our template needs to be self-referential as well. That means that we need to use red question mark whenever we have a doll inside the definition. Larger doll smaller of D produces a doll. That means we need to call the red question mark function on that doll as part of our template. Now we have a string to work with in the first clause and a Boolean to work with in the second clause, and we've completed writing our template, preserving all of the forms of parallelism between the data definition and the template. Now let's finish by writing our function definition. In the first case, we need to compare the string with red. We'll do that with string equals question mark. If that produces true or false, one of those is our answer. What about when we have a larger doll? The information about the larger doll isn't relevant, except what we know about the smaller doll. We want to know if its innermost doll is red, because its innermost doll is the same as the innermost doll of the doll we started with. So we can just ignore everything else, ask whether the smaller doll is red, and produce that answer. In fact, that's the piece of data, the Boolean, that we already have in our template. So we can just use that. And now we've completed our function, and we're happy. Now let's look at how Dr. Rackett works through functions with self-references 
by using the stepper. Here's an example where we have a larger doll with several levels of nesting with blue on the inside. This should produce false, but let's see how we get there by using the stepper. Here's our example. We're checking whether this nesting of larger dolls is actually red on the inside. You can see that it isn't, but we'll see how Dr. Rocket gets there. It gets there by first replacing red question mark with the conditional that's inside the body of red question mark. We check whether this doll is a small doll, and otherwise we check if it's a larger doll, and then we continue uh, working. Let's take another step. Here we've made progress. We now need to check whether the inner doll with only two larger doll wrappers is red. If we take, uh, if we look on the right hand side, we see that we're going to check red question mark of larger doll smaller, make larger doll. But how did we get to this point? Well, what did we have previously? What we ended up with was checking whether larger doll smaller of our original example was red. Larger doll smaller of make larger doll just produces the doll on the inside. And that's all we need. So here's the step we took. And let's jump forward again. Now we need to ask whether the next step is red. Now we need to ask whether the next step is red. And now we're in a different place. We're checking whether an actual small doll is a small doll. That's true. So our conditional will take us to this string equals question. This string equals question mark needs to first get out the color of our blue small doll. At which point, we're just comparing the strings red and blue, and that's false. Now we're done with the steps of our program, and we've gotten the correct answer simply by following the same rules that we've always seen in the stepper.